This is the classic score attack mode in the upcoming release of Tetris Effect Connected, which runs on an Xbox or PC, which is kind of a landmark moment in the history of classic Tetris. Why is it significant? Well, it's meant to be just like a match of the classic Tetris World Championships. But despite what the slick re-renderings of the game may suggest, these guys are not playing a modern release of Tetris. They're playing NES Tetris from 1989 literally on equipment from back then. Original NES consoles and CRT televisions are what's used at the tournaments and what the top competitors typically play on at home. Another complication is that the tournament's format was originally developed as kind of a makeshift way to determine the world champion of what was originally a single player game. The classic Tetris World Championships just have people playing games on two separate cartridges. So if you want to play at home with someone like this, you'd have to get two whole setups. And if you want to play a match with someone online, the community has resorted to both players individually live streaming their games and then a third party combining both of those live streams into a third live stream and providing score updates through the commentary. It's a bit of a process. So Classic Score Attack has a lot of things that simply haven't been available before. It's the first time this exact multiplayer Tetris format has been included in an official release of Tetris. The mechanics of the spins, the look and speed of the levels, the scoring system, the quirks of the delayed auto shift, it's all the same. And like the other modes in Tetris Effect Connected, that includes the ability to play local multiplayer, play private online matches with friends, or opt into a ranked match where you'll be paired up online with someone from your skill level. Getting a 31-year-old game onto a modern release wasn't easy for a whole host of reasons. But one of the classic Tetris scene's biggest stars was part of the team at Enhanced Games that made it happen. This is Tomohiro Tatajima, more commonly known by his screen name Green T, who is the multiplayer lead game designer for Tetris Effect Connected. I sat down recently to talk with him about his history with the game and how Classic Score Attack came to be. So how did you get started playing NES Tetris? Uh, in the first place, I am a big fan of Tetris, and I love playing various kinds of Tetris games, uh, regardless of they say old and new. Three years ago, one of the CTWC competitors in Japan introduced me to this game, and I had a try. It was only several games until I became addicted. Since then, I started playing NES Tetris seriously. As I learned how the delayed old shift system works, the characteristics of each piece, I found the game more and more attractive and I could not stop playing it. If you're unfamiliar with how a match goes, it's pretty straightforward. Both competitors play a game and whoever has the highest score at the end wins. The highest priority is getting as many Tetris line clears as possible, as they're worth way more than singles, doubles, and triples. The strategy comes from both players pressuring each other on when to pace themselves and when to be more aggressive, like two runners on a racetrack. And the finish line is whenever the levels get too fast for you to handle. Generally, level 19 is the limit and unless you're an expert player, and level 29 is the final barrier for all but a select few who are the best in the world. Oh, extra Tetris! And level 30! Yay! Perfect game! So how did it get decided to include Classic Score Attack in Tetris Effect Connected? And we, uh, we, Enhance, uh, got really impressed by the Classic Tetris World Championship and its community. When we decided to make some new modes for our updated Tetris effect, it felt very natural that one will be the Classic Tetris inspired one. But there was one concern. Is it okay to include a non-standardized rule in a modern release? So the issue at hand here is that beginning in 2001, the Tetris company introduced an annual set of rules called the Tetris Guideline in order to standardize the mechanics across every Tetris game. So every new release is supposed to follow these rules. A lot of the mechanics, such as the ghost piece that previews where your piece will drop, the hold chamber where you can save your current piece, these aren't in NES Tetris. It's a game that predates the Tetris Guideline and even the Tetris company itself. But including the game in its original form was very important, as the challenge of playing it that way is what a lot of the strategy of the competitive scene is built around. It took a very long time to resolve this, but finally we got a special approval and including classic score attack in Tetris Effect Connected became reality. Awesome. So what were some of the challenges in adapting NES Tetris for a modern release? Uh, one challenge at first uh, was to know how exactly NES Tetris works. 
uh, in order to replicate the system of the game faithfully. As a game designer of this project, I did a detailed investigation to make the system clear, such as in what order the input is processed or how many frames the game should wait for after placing tetriminos. I also included some weird behaviors or what could be thought as bugs of NES Tetris into this implementation. One of those unusual behaviors is the way the game interacts with the RNG, or random number generator, to produce the piece sequences. In the Tetris guideline, the rule is that you'll get one of every piece in cycles of seven. This is called seven bag. For NES Tetris, that concept wasn't around yet, so the goal was to simulate true randomness with the pieces, so you have to be prepared for anything. But computers prefer to work with multiples of two, so creating code that tried to evenly distribute seven pieces with the limited computing power of the time resulted in some compromises in how the mathematical expressions turn the RNG into a random piece sequence. So it's almost completely random, but not quite. Now most people aren't going to know the difference, but to people who take the game seriously, knowing that those mathematical expressions are being used is important in knowing that they're playing the same game. For random number generator, we don't use the same system as the original, uh, which is called LFSR. But how the pieces are chosen from generated random numbers is designed to be completely the same as any Tetris. Another challenge was how you integrate this system to the existing Tetris Effect system. Tetris Effect is designed to fit the modern Tetris rules. Also, the game doesn't expect to be run on fixed frame rate. CC supports various platforms, including VR. For some context here, the timing of everything in NES Tetris revolves around the NTSC color encoding standards for analog televisions, which gives a frame rate of 60 frames per second. This consistency is what allows top players to pull off moves that require frame-perfect precision. But Tetris Effect's frame rate isn't always constant. Our chief programmer did a really great job about that. The core game logic runs on fixed 60 frames per second while supporting variable rendering frame rate. The mode also features some audio-visual effects as in the original Tetris effect, while the puzzle part is exactly like classic Tetris. But a question some top-level players might have after all of this is, well, does it really feel the same when it comes down to it? Can you still play at a high skill level in this version? Of course. Uh, admittedly, there is some latency compared to original NES and CRT television, uh, which might be noticeable for the players of NES Tetris. Uh, but using a low latency LCD monitor, you can reach close to the fitting of the original equipment. And if you're playing on PC, I strongly recommend to go to graphic options and to set VSync off. This will reduce a large amount of latency in most cases. The real test, of course, would be to see how high somebody can score in this mode. I had previously asked Green Tea if he had a personal best in this mode, but he said mm, not really because he spends all of his time testing things out instead of going for high scores. But less than 15 minutes later, he sent me this picture of a casual 893,000 score. And then while I was putting together this video, he sent me this clip of him getting a 616,000 transition, continuing to score big on the higher levels, and clutching out what has to be the first ever max out or million point score on this mode. So it's definitely possible for a top player to play at their full potential. And for what it's worth, when I got to test out the game, it felt the same to me. I was able to get similar scores to what I normally get on an original console. But one of the hidden benefits of all this is, after all the work to faithfully replicate the original game, it also gave the designers the ability to add some additional options that were never there before. If you want to practice for the Classic Tetris World Championships, of course, you aren't going to want to change these settings but if you want to, here's a rundown of what you can change. If the side-to-side -side piece movements are too slow for you, you can increase the speed. If the almost entirely random piece sequences get to be a little bit too frustrating, you can switch it over to 7-bag if you want. You can also toggle on and off a 2-minute time limit for the player with the deficit to chase down the leading player's score after they top out, giving pressure throughout for both players to never get too far behind from one another. If you want a marathon on one level indefinitely, you can do that. If you want to adjust how much each line clear is worth, you can do that too. And if you've got some time, you can even increase the number of games it takes to win up to 100. Another question I've been seeing from the community after the initial announcement about this mode is if there's a single player option, to which the answer is 
Technically no, but in practicality, yes. Because there's no garbage sending in this mode, the two games on the screen don't directly interact. So you can set yourself up to play against an AI on the loading screen and then just choose whether or not to pay attention to the AI's score. And there's actually a whole other similar mode on this game that I haven't even talked about yet, which is score attack. So this mode is the same in that it's got the NES color palette and you win by getting a higher score than your opponent before both of you top out, but this mode has all the Tetris guideline rules like the hold piece, the ghost piece, multiple piece previews, etc. So if you're more familiar with that, this might be the mode for you. So here, Tetris line clears are still valuable but even more important now are T-spins because they're more efficient in getting you points with only spending two burnt lines so you won't move up to the impossible speeds as fast. Which, full disclosure, this is not footage of me playing. This is green tea. Now, this is what it looks like when I play at that level. Ah, ah. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, it's pretty darn fast. Anyways, I'm looking forward to how these modes are potentially going to integrate into the classic Tetris scene because a lot of people in the community weren't ever sure something like this would be possible, both from a logistical and legal perspective. So I'm really glad that Green Tea and the rest of the team have put in the work to make this happen and to really try and focus on making this happen right. Tetris Effect Connected is coming out on November 10th on the Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and on Windows 10 PCs through the Microsoft Store. It's also on Xbox Game Game Pass, so if that's something you have, that's a way to get it without even having to pay for anything. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next deep dive video, and thanks for watching.